God can do anything. He made the heaven and earth with his mouth. And he made you with his mouth. Let it be that it was. Let it be male, let it be female. And notice how he put some flaming, let it be black, white, Italian, Puerto Rican, <laughs> Japanese, Philippine. Let it be. <laughs> He's a God of flavor. And do you ever notice yourself how he strategically made you? Give you a heart so you can pump blood in. Give you a brain so you can think. Give you a tongue so you can taste. Give you eyes so you can see. A nose so you can smell. Ears that you can hear. Saints so you can touch and feel. It gave you feet to walk on, legs to walk on, knees. Put a knee. He teaches that made you. Because what? He can do anything. And he did it with a word. With a word. God did it. Are you with me, church? Oh, yeah. He can do anything. Go be this Isaiah 45. Y'all see y'all love God tonight? Yeah. 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 Bless the Lord. Absolutely. For the mighty God we serve. Isaiah what? Isaiah 45. I'm not going to keep you here all night, I promise. <laughs> Let me see. What time is it now? Uh, maybe, what I'm going to say, maybe 12. <laughs> Isaiah 45. Mm -hmm. Not yet. Glory. Glory. Glory, mighty God, we serve. Jesus. Glory to God. Come on, Jeff. Start with verse 16. Just start with verse 15. <laughs> Truly you are God who hide yourself, O God of Israel, the Savior, and they shall be ashamed and also disgrace all of them. They shall go in confusion together who are makers of idols. But Israel shall be saved by the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed or disgraced forever and ever. Thus says the Lord who created the heaven, who is God, who formed the earth and made it, who has established it, who did not create it in vain, who formed it to, to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Hallelujah. How many believe there's no other God beside God? Oh, Look yeah. what he did. He created it. Can you imagine one day he decides, say, hey, let me make you a little bit of your name again, brother? Calvin. Calvin. Let me make Calvin. What I'm going to do before, before Calvin come on the scene, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give him a great, 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 great grandmama, great granddaddy, and then I'm going to bring my mama. And it's that, it's that. Because he saw him all those years ago. Look how he did it. He's sitting here today because of God who created somebody to create you. He's something else, ain't he? Yes. Yeah. And he created you here for a reason. Nobody on this earth has got saved just to be getting saved. Nobody. You got saved to do what God called you to do. Yeah. You better find out what it is. Because so many people dying. You graduate from college in the wrong degree because they never asked God what you called me to do. You need to find out what God called you to do. And once you find out your calling, once you find out your destiny, I'm telling you, man, I can't nothing stop you. Can't nothing stop you. You need to find out that God is, that I am, that I am God. He's the God of glory. He's the God that can do stuff that you can't do. Amen. Are you with me, church? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Glory to God. I never forget that lady in Davenport Hour in that wheelchair. I looked at her and I went, oh my God, that's this. She had, the, she had one of those wheelchairs that you blow in and make the wheelchair go. Because she had no control with her hand. I mean, you hear what I'm telling you, church? She was in a wheelchair that she blow. When she blow in it, then the wheelchair moves. Davenport Hour. She came to the altar. A blind man got eyes open that night, deaf ears open up, and all of a sudden, nobody prayed for her. All of a sudden, the Spirit of God came and shot out of that wheelchair. She danced like, like a Michael Jackson. I mean, she was dancing so good, left the wheelchair there at the church. And I seen with my own eyes. Thank you, Jesus. Don't tell me he can't do this stuff. I seen it. Praise God. 3,000 people there that night. Jesus real. You heal anybody about that belief. Mm -hmm. He'll give you a miracle if you believe. Mm -hmm. Sometimes God give you stuff like that. Sometimes God says, wait a minute, I can't give it to you right now. 
I got developed patient patience in you. Yeah. But you hear me, church? We, we want patient one now, though. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to me now. I can't wait no longer. Y'all still here? Go me to Jeremiah 32. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 32. And you get to say glory. Y'all quiet tonight, boy. Glory. That must be full. Jeremiah 32. That must be some stakes today. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you get to say glory. Glory. Look at verse, look at verse 32. Now, I want you to see this now. Verse 32. I gave this verse many, many times here. 32, 32. He said, Our Lord God, behold, you have made the heaven and earth by your great power and outstretched arm, and there is nothing too hard for you. Everybody said, there is nothing too hard for God. Nothing too hard. Now, this is Jeremiah talking to God. Jeremiah talks saying, there is nothing too hard for you. Jeremiah telling God what you did. God, Lord God, behold, you have made the heaven and earth by your great power, and outstretched arm, and there is nothing too hard for you. This is Jeremiah talking to God. Now, why does God talk back to Jeremiah? Look at verse 26 and 27. Then the word of the Lord come unto me, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? He talking back to having a conversation. And he asked, now he asked Jeremiah a question. Jeremiah just told him nothing too hard for you. Now God said, Is there anything? Is there anything? The only thing the Bible says God can't do, the Bible says it is impossible for God to lie. That's right. He cannot lie to you. He cannot lie. That's why he said, trust me. Trust me. Because I'm not going to lie to you. And the Bible says, those that trust the Lord will never be ashamed. Never, ever be ashamed. Those that trust the Lord. Never, ever, 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 ever. He will never let you be ashamed and trust him. That's why we quit. And then the shame comes. Because you quit. Then you start saying, God didn't move. No. The day you get ready to move is the day you stopped. Are you hearing, church? You have to believe that God is who He said He is. How many believe that today? Amen. Oh, yeah. I, I, I like giving testimony. <laughs> I, I mean, I really do. I love giving testimony. And that same place in Davenport, Iowa, I, I told y'all this testimony. There was another man in the wheelchair. The devil told me, he said, don't pray for that man. God ain't going to heal him. I'm in the pastor office praying, getting ready to go out to go preach. And I see this van pull up. And I knew then, you know, you know what a handicapped band looked like. Band looked like. And I saw it and I went, hmm. And it, it, the band was fancy. I mean, you can tell they put a lot of money in that band. And all of a sudden, the door opened up. And all of a sudden, the wheelchair come out, then on the ground. And then a, little, a lady was pushing him. I looked at this young man and I went, my God. I looked at the window now. And this voice told me, do not pray for him because God won't heal him. And fear Jesus. came. Now I'm in, the, I'm in the office praying. Praying like crazy. Praying for the meeting. Praying, 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 praying. And fear visit me. While I'm praying. Don't tell me the devil won't come. Why are you praying? Amen. I made him pay for coming too. <laughs> yeah, come, huh? Are you hearing me, church? Yeah. So now the church is so packed. The only place that lady can get with that wheelchair is by that, like that man standing by the door back there. She couldn't get in the church. It was so packed. Tell me you're calling back. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, now the church is so packed, man, you can't hold it. Move. I can barely move while I'm preaching. And I had an altar call. I said, oh, my God, how am I going to pray for all these people? Oh, God, you got to help me here. you got to help me. And I'm sweating. I'm praying for all these folks. And all of a sudden, I could see her coming down the aisle. But you can't see him because he's in a wheelchair. But you can hear this. Ah, ah, and every five or six seconds, they had to watch the, the, the slob coming from his mouth because he can't hold his head up. So they keep wiping the slob off his mouth. He had no muscles from being in the wheelchair so long that his side looked like little wrist. I said, my God. And finally, she got right here. Right there. Now, I'm praying for people, they falling like somebody killing them, shooting them. But I get to him, nothing happened. The notice seemed like he just left me. 
said, God, what is this? And that wife had that disgusting look on her face. Well, I took him to all evangelists, all preachers in this country, and nothing happened. She really did. Every evangelist, she took him to Benny Hinn meetings, she took him to all of them. She said, nothing happened. <coughs> nothing. So I'm praying for the man, and I don't feel nothing. I said, man, did I buy flowers or something? And I thought, my God, what's going on here? And I had to spend the God say, here's some oil. Get some oil. Because who got some oil? That pastor just flooded me. I ain't need that much. <laughs> you know? And so I anointed it all. I did what James 5, 14 and 15 say. If any sick can be among you, let him call for the elder, and let him anoint him in oil, and pray the prayer of faith, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. I did that, and she looked at me, and nothing happened. She gave me that look like, this stuff don't work. She took the man, took him back to the very corner again. So now, all of a sudden, the anointing hit me again. I said, my God, why? What? Why did you do that? So I'm praying for people. Some people, I, ain't, I couldn't even get to them. They were falling. And all of a sudden, I had my back turned, praying for people. And all of a sudden, you thought your football team, with the last two seconds on the clock, just scored the touchdown, and your team won. The church went berserk. The church went nuts. The church went crazy. That same man in that wheelchair that I prayed for come running from the back up beside me, running, <laughs> and asked me, can I pray? When can I help you pray? Jesus. Hallelujah. And I asked God, I said, what? why did you do it that way? He said, I'm trying to get you from being free from you. I'm trying to let you know it ain't about you. It's about the word. It's about the anointed. He said, I said, the Lord will raise him up. Not Sherman. So he yeah. said, get your faith oh, out of you and put your faith in God. Right. Oh, we got so much faith in the man instead of Jesus. Yes. Yeah. She's the one that raised the man from the dead. Why? Because I'm the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Yes. Is there anything too hard for me? Yes, no, nothing. Nothing. Hallelujah, Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. I'm telling you, if you're going to preach Jesus, you better preach it. I like what the brother said today. He don't want to preach a theory, God. He want to preach a God that does it. Amen, Amen church. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> bless him, Lord. Bless him. <laughs> How many want to see God move through you? Oh, yeah. He will. He will. You know what I'm saying? I think you're going to need hands on the hand of the sick, and Lord, they will recover. Amen. This is all sitting every day. And as you begin to speak that and say that, guess what happened? That stuff starts coming in your hand. You understand what I'm saying? Lord, when I walk by people, something's going to happen. Yeah. Amen. Amen, church? Yeah. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> Hallelujah, Jesus. How many believe God will do it for you tonight? See, we always believe God will do it for somebody else. But we're going to believe God will do it for us. Go, go to my favorite scripture in the whole Bible. One of my favorite. i got so many of them. <laughs> go to, everybody go to Psalm 57. Hey, can we turn that heat off, bro? Yeah. You don't want smoke up in here. You have to? No, I'll put that on. Hold on, hold on. Don't let you touch it. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Hey, 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 you. Lord. Psalm 57. Everybody got it? No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Most of you probably know it because I've been giving it to you for five years. <laughs> Psalm 57, look at verse 2. I cried unto God, most high, unto God that performs all things for me. Let me read it again. I cried unto God, most high, Unto God that performs all things for me. You keep crying to God and God perform it for you. He'll perform Come on. He will perform that thing. If you keep crying out to him. You can see, it is a crazy cry what God is looking for. He's looking for a relentless cry. A cry that have no weakness in it. A cry that have no doubts in it. A cry that say, hey God, I don't care how long it takes. You say it, I believe it. That's the kind of cry God is looking for. Amen. He went with his ups and down, ups and down faith. One day you up here, the next day you down. But you got a roller coaster type faith. You up and you down, and you up and you down, and you up and you down, and you up and down. Hey, what's really going to be? Up or down? 
<laughs> Are you hearing me, church? Yeah. Either you're going to believe or you're not going to believe. Amen. Yeah, that's true. Oh, y'all sure y'all love Jesus today. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. You're going to have faith. Faith. That believe God will do what He's saying He'll do. Amen. And I always remember this, brother and sister. Don't you ever try to tell God how to do it. You just believe that He'll do it. Yeah. Don't ever say, God, how are you going to do it? Your job is to say, Lord, I don't know how, when, where, or who. All I know you did, and I thank you for doing it. Yeah, amen. Amen, amen church. Amen. And what, I always remember this now. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to be alone tonight. Once you start believing God, the number one thing that you cannot do, you can't let your mind wonder. Once your mind starts wondering, I'm telling you, it, sometimes it takes your faith, really get faith, to grab your mind and bring it back. Amen. Because your mind starts wondering. That's a bad place to be when you got faith. When you're saying you're trusting God, you start to wonder how God's going to do it. Wonder when it's going to get done. Wonder how it's done. The second you start wondering, I'm telling you, you're on danger ground now. Your job is to walk the floor at night and say, Lord, I thank you for doing it. Lord, I thank you for the victory in Jesus' name. Lord, I walk by faith and not by sight in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for doing it. Lord, there's nothing too hard for you. Lord, you said, you, you put it back in my ball, Lord God. You said, all things are possible. You never believe it. I believe Jesus. I believe Jesus. I believe Jesus. I believe. I believe. See, so you got to start telling yourself, I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I don't care what it looks like. I believe in Jesus' name. I believe in Jesus' name. Jesus, I thank you for doing it. I thank you for doing it, Father. I thank you in Jesus' name for doing it for me. I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for doing this for me. Jesus, you're my miracle worker, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for doing it for me. And the devil comes to you next day and hit you harder and harder and harder and you harder. And then he got you talking to God. Oh, God, why is this happening to me? Why is that? God, the devil hates you. He don't want you to get it. You got to have a relentless face. You got to have, like, remember I told you how you fight dogs? And no dog people will grab hold of each other, they don't want to let go. You got to get that, you got to get like that. Have you ever seen that, that show, The Alligator Boys? You ever seen when the alligator grabs them, how they roll? And they roll, they roll. You need to grab a hold of God with that kind of faith. Grab a hold of God and just roll with it. Amen. All you hear is say, roll with it. And don't let go till you get it. Amen, Amen church? Amen. But we got that kind of faith. Of, if a dog, say, just like dog, and another dog bites his dog real hard, he go, oh, he look the other way. Oh, you hear me? He look the other way, he go, oh. You ever seen Mike Tyson when he hit somebody? When Mike Tyson hit him, guess what happened? He go, oh my God, I feel that. I feel that. I'm watching TV. <laughs> Are you hearing me, church? Well, sometimes when a dog bites each other, man, that dog's waving. This guy got some power. And that dog went right out, so I lose the fight. Well, let two of them bad to the bone grab the whole each other. They just stay there and lock and shake each other and shake each other and rip each other and shake. I mean, they don't care nothing about no pain. They just fight and hold on and rip each other and rip each other. You got to get to that point you like that with Jesus. I'm going to hold it on. I don't care how much the devil, I don't care how much the punk he hit me with. I'm going to stay here till I rip this devil off in Jesus' name. I'm going to stay here till I rip this spirit of poverty. I'm going to rip this sickness off me in Jesus' name. I'm going to hold on to God. I'm going to shake this thing off me. Come on. Amen. You have to get to that way. Yes. Praise God. You have to get that kind of faith. I'm telling you, most Christians don't have that kind of faith. They don't have that pit bull of faith. They have, like I say, a roller coaster of faith. How can you tell when you got a pit bull of faith? Because you're the same tomorrow and you was today. Your faith. It don't waver. It don't change. It don't have no, it don't have no sickness. It don't have no just one gear. It just blasts the kingdom down. Oh, you hear me, church? Amen. You can have that kind of faith. I'm not letting go till I get it. Come on. I'm not letting go till I get it. I've been praying this right here. God, I'm not letting go. I ain't going to heaven till I went 100 million people to Jesus. Jesus. If Ron Harbonke went 100 million, I can't do. In fact, I want to go past Ron Harbonke. <laughs> oh, you hear me, church? 100 some million people, that one man led to Jesus. Come on. Face to face. I don't sound like face to face this man done this. Oh, you hear me, church? I said, God, you know respect the person. Amen. My prayer, I totally changed my prayer. I've been changing. I'm a soul winner. I think the Lord will win me. 
millions and millions and millions. Lord, not just me going to be saved, but hundreds of millions going to be filled with the Holy Ghost and yeah. healed, delivered yeah. in Jesus' name. Are yes. oh, you hear me, church? Yes. yes. Amen. Glory to God. What? <laughs> Anything too hard for God? No. What did God say? All things are possible to him that believeth. Yeah. Remember when Jesus said, they asked to Jesus, uh, who can be saved? What did the man say? The thing that is impossible with man, possible. what? Possible with God. Come on. You got an honesty that nobody can save, so that case can't end up be saved. It's possible with God. Mm -hmm. Okay, how rough there? Look at me. I'm a freaking cocaine fanatic. <laughs> oh, you don't know about that. <laughs> I think he set me free from cocaine. 28 years ago from cocaine, cocaine. Doing it for 13, 14 years, cocaine. Hallelujah. I mean, some big, you know, I'm talking about lines. You know, them, you play football for you know, that white line they put down the football field? You know what I mean? <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Set me free from that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Never had no, no, no wish rough. Didn't it, I didn't go no AA. <laughs> I went to the big J, Dr. G. Yeah. Yeah. King of deliverance. King of miracles. I told you one day I was sitting there watching John Wayne. That movie Children. You ever you know, seen that movie Children? Yeah. I was sitting there watching John Wayne. I've been saved about eight years now. And I'm watching John Wayne. And all of a sudden, I started doing this. You know how everybody ever did cocaine, you know. <laughs> Jeremiah, you don't know about that, do you? You thought. <laughs> So all of a sudden, I ain't been in eight years. I'm sitting in the couch watching John Wayne. I said, so, wait a minute. Something's in this room. And all of a sudden, I smell it. And it started getting stronger. All of a sudden, I started getting a craving. Man, I want some coke. Man, I want some coke. Man. I mean, I'm, I'm starting to do this now. I ain't been in eight years now. Oh, man. Then I heard him say it. I heard this voice. You lost the anointing to get people saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Oh, you should have never said that. I said, in the name of Jesus, you can't leave. I command you to get on your belly when I'm talking to you right now. You should have never came here. You should have never came in this room. Mm -hmm. So what did I do? Church, you think I'm, you think I'm making this up, but you can feel my floor vibrate. And... So I just start worshiping. I said, you here? Choke on this. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. I glorify you, Jesus. I just spit out there in Jesus' name. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. I glorify your name, Jesus. I magnify now. I this voice. Let me go. Let me go. No, you stay in Jesus' name. I worship you, Jesus. I glorify you, Jesus. And then all of a sudden, in Jesus' name, go! And I promise you, the curtain just went, just, I mean, just moved. So you know what I did? I got out of my house. Went out and laid 14 people to Jesus and 14 people baptized in the Holy Spirit. I said, you tell me again I lost the anointing. Boy, you hear me, church. Are y'all with me? Why? Because God can do the whole thing in the name of who? Jesus. You love Jesus? You really love it? Well, you, I'm tired the way I, I'm tired of being the way I am. I'm tired of having these ups and down days and uh, one day I'm up, one day I'm down. Lord, give it all to God tonight. Because I do believe we live in the last day. I like what Andre said what uh, Pastor Gary Hoffman uh, Gary Coffin said. They stopped right in the middle of the teacher and said, What are you gonna do for God? Do it now. And I've been saying that for months. For months. If you can do anything for God, it's the time to do it. I'm telling you, this is time to do it. We are in a day, we're in a time now. Man, we better know about Jesus. 
We better know him, man. We start spending some time with the King of Kings and Lord of Glory. Amen. And write down what do you want God to do through you. Write it down. The Bible says, write the vision on the tablet. That he that read, read it may run with it. For the vision is only yet for a point in time. Though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come and not tarry. God said, write these vision down. The thing that you want God to do through you, write them down. To God, I want your healing power. I want your miracle working power. I want the work of the miracle. I want the gift of healing. Lord, I want the supernatural. I want the supernatural. Write this stuff down. And then begin to thank him. And then begin to declare and decree over you every day. I operate in miracles. I operate yeah. in miracles in Jesus' name. I operate in healing in Jesus' name. Yeah. This is what this is. You got to saying. This is my life. This is my lifestyle now. I operate in miracles. I'm, do you guys know what I'm saying stuff like this? I'm a miracle going someplace to happen. I'm healing going someplace to happen. I'm a living going someplace to happen. I'm salvation going someplace to happen. Why? Because the kingdom of God lives within you. You have a right to say this stuff. Amen. 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 Every day. You guys start doing how did Jesus do it? He created the world with his word. You create your world with your word. You guys start saying every day, I am somebody. I will make a difference. I'm bold as a lion in Jesus' name. I'm a soul winner in Jesus' name. The healing power of God flows to me in Jesus' name. The miracle of the power of God flows to me in Jesus' name. I'm not a nobody. I'm a somebody. Amen, church? Amen. Amen. You guys start confessing this. Confess it. Confess it. And believe it. Believe it. Amen. We confess all the other stuff. How we start confessing? Amen. Are you here in church? Amen. I remember when I eat the world, I used to confess every day, every Friday weekend. I'm going to get drunk, I'm get my coke, and I'm going to get me a woman. I did it every single Friday and Saturday. Every Friday. And then when you have no cocaine, we just say, man, I got to get some coke. And we just say stuff like this too. Man, the cocaine guy. But you know, you remember the song? The freaks come out at night. I remember that song. The freaks come out at night. Y'all know that song? Look at that. Yeah. You know what? The cocaine freaks they come out. They come out late at night. So we sitting there and working in the club. Man, we ain't have nothing. Just drinking. I don't want no more liquor, man. I want. I want to get right. So man, it's about time for the cocaine boys to come in now. It's about time for the freaks. They'll be in the living. Guess what? I will call them in. I will speak them into existence. And they would come in, boom. They walk in, they knew we knew we had a little sickness we used to do. That's it. When they see them nod their head, they time to go to the bathroom in the stall. Nobody did it but me, right? <laughs> oh, you hear me, church? Amen. Y'all love God tonight? Amen. Yeah. You really love God tonight? We do. Amen. Do we have anybody here that, man, you really don't know Jesus? You have an opinion of him, you don't have a relationship with him? Anybody like that tonight? Anybody? You want to know him? You want to truly, 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 truly be saved tonight? I say you, man. You can come here and surrender all to the King of Kings and the Lord of the Lord. Because God can do it. Somebody in this room, God is about to do something real big through. Thank you, Jesus. I, I, let me, let me, I got to read this to you. Hold on. Somebody here, God, about to do something great for you. I'm telling you what I see right now. In the book of Job, chapter 2, I want to read this to you. You don't have to turn it up if you don't want to, but if you want to, you can. Job, Job, J O E L, Job, chapter 2. Oh my God, this is, this is powerful. Job, chapter 2, verse 21. He said, Fear not, O land. And be glad and rejoice for the Lord will do great things. God is about to do some great things for somebody in this. Somebody need to claim that right now. Thank you. So I claim that in Jesus' name. Somebody do great things. Hallelujah. And look at verse 26. And you shall eat plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wonder with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God. And none else. My people shall never be ashamed. God is about to do something great for somebody in this room. Come on. Thank you, Lord. My God, something big, supernatural. And you know what? It's going to be God that does it. Not you. God. Right. Amen, sir? Somebody said, I claim that. I claim that. I receive that. I receive that. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Sure. 
the jewels of Jesus' name, the cream. And, and listen, and quote that scripture back to God every day. Lord, you're doing something great for me today. You're doing something great for me today. I decree in Jesus' name, you're doing for me today something great in life. Amen, church? Y'all love God? Yeah. You got to go ahead, brother. Stand up and get that tap on the uh, it just kind of went along with what you were saying that you yeah. know, God can do it through you. Yeah. You don't have to yeah. be a preacher. And, yeah. uh, yesterday, uh, we were, I was painting an apartment, and I asked the manager if you know if she needed prayer for anything. And she uh, um, she was on crutches for a couple months, but she hurt her uh, broke her cartilage or something in her knee, and um, and asked her her back was hurt. And she said, "Not right now," but she put her arms up, and one of her hands was about an inch shorter than the other. And I prayed I prayed for her, and her arm grew up. Amen. And then, uh, then I asked her to sit down, and I said, well, let's, let's measure her legs. And yeah, the leg that her cartilage broke and that she had a lot of pain in a couple months was about an inch shorter than the other one. And we prayed in the name of Jesus, and the leg grew out right in front of our eyes. Hallelujah. And then it grew actually longer than the other leg. And then the other leg adjusted to it. And so, you know. And I didn't feel no anointing, no power. I just prayed in the name of Jesus, prayed the prayer of faith, and, yeah. and God did it. So, all right. that was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody bless tonight. Everybody bless tonight. Everybody bless tonight. Everybody say, my God can do it. My God can do it for me. I put my trust in Almighty God. I'm not man. But God, the Lord Jesus, is my miracle worker. Say that again. Jesus is my miracle worker. Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my provider. Jesus is my truth. He's my teacher. He's my deliverer. Everything I need is in the name of Jesus. Everything I need is in the word of God. I thank you, Lord, for your mighty word. I thank you, Father, for you doing it for me. I refuse to doubt you. I choose to believe. I choose to believe. I don't care what it looks like. I got it. I got it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Just do what Arnold Schwarzenegger did when he first came to America. The man decreed what he was going to do and become and did everything. He said, My baby's still up here. I'm going to win it all. I'm going to win every show. Then he said, After that, I'm going to get an act. And he did that. He said, After that, then I'm going to get into politics. He prophesied what he's going to do and he did it. And he don't even believe in God. He said, He's God. The Bible says life and death and the power of the tongue, right? Amen. Right. The Bible says a man better shall be certified. Look what the Bible says now. A man better shall be certified with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips, his lips shall he be full. Are right. oh, you hearing me, church? Amen. I'm telling you, the Bible says God will, 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 will bless you, bless your mouth with good things. Amen. You have to start saying, you got to start talking like on a sports anchor. You start saying, if he can say it, and he's a sinner, and look what happened. Yeah. It came to pass. The man won everything, and he got in. The old morals now. And he said, I don't believe in God. Oh, you hear me? Your word have power, negative or positive. Your word can make you or break you. Everything you need from God is in where? Your mouth. And I can prove it to you. Amen. Glory. Everything you need. All the soul you have win in your life is in your mouth Amen. and in your heart. Amen. All the anointing that you want is in your mouth. Amen. Are you hearing me, church? Amen. Amen. Whatever you need from God, open up your mouth and thought declare, declare and decree. Amen, Amen church? Y'all love God? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, give the Lord a hand clap. Come on.